Welcome to A plus B I. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very exponential equation with complex numbers and with I. We have e to the power e to the power z equals I. I hope I haven't made this problem before because it looks familiar somewhat. Maybe I did the, the version with 1 where we get something interesting with e to the power z. Because if e to the power z cannot be 0, right? Can it? No. Unless z is negative infinity, but that's not a number. Because infinity is not a number either. So, how do we solve such a problem? We can go ahead and use what's called the complex exponentiation. Wait a minute. We already have a complex exponent on the left. What about the right-hand side? We can use the polar form. Great. I mean, some people are probably just going to log both sides you know this is very typical or that okay why don't we just natural log both sides and then we're gonna get this to the front bring it in down and then this is ln e ln e is one so we can totally forget about it and then ln one more time if you ln this and ln that you're gonna get z times ln e which is one and z is gonna be ln of ln i Oh, wait a minute, what is ln of ln i? What is ln i in the first place, right? So we kind of need to talk about the natural log of a complex number, which is the complex logarithm. You gotta be very careful because it's multi-valued. So we're gonna consider that fact when we solve this problem a little bit more rigorously using Euler's formula, or should I say the polar form, okay? So here's how it goes. We're gonna try to be more careful, not just log both sides because this is kind of like, what is this, right? I mean, you can still simplify it, but I'd rather do it this way. Okay. So, first things first. We're going to write I in polar form. If you think about the argand plane, just a fancy word for the coordinate system, where this is called the real axis and this is called the imaginary axis, okay? And I appears on the imaginary axis one unit away from zero, this little guy here, which is kind of like a rotation. So you take one, right? Rotate it 90 degrees, you get I. So here's the imaginary word. It's that kind of like a two-dimensional because we have the real number set and then we have the another set or line that is perpendicular, which is called complex numbers and I is called imaginary. Did, did somebody just imagine that number so it wasn't real? Well, it's not real, obviously, but it's real in a different sense, right? I mean, it's in real life, come on. You, electronics and lots of stuff can be done with complex numbers. Anyways, that's a different story. But the fact that it's been rotated gives us the argument, which is pi over two in radians, right? Great, you do need two pieces of information, r and theta, to be able to write any complex number as r times e to the i theta. r is the modulus or the absolute value the distance from zero in this case it's one because i was one was just rotated so it should have the same distance right this distance is preserved right and theta is the argument and argument is we just talked about it it's pi over two but you can do more rotations give it another two pi you'll get five pi over two wait a minute it brings us to the same point at another two pi you can add millions of pi literally 1 million pi can be added or subtracted, it won't matter. So, we're going to have a more general representation of that. What is it? Let me show you. e to the e to the z equals e to the power, r is 1, so I didn't write it, i times theta. Theta is pi over 2, but that's called the, the principal argument, which is the smallest value between negative pi and pi, right? And then, we're going to add... 2 pi n, where n is an integer, okay? Multiples of 2 pi in other words. Cool, cool. This brings us to another level, okay? One layer down. So, if you natural log both sides at this point, this will make much more sense because you're going to end up with something like this. Look, e to the z equals, now notice that we're comparing this to this, right? Because ln e is 1. So we're going to have now i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. And we have to be careful because depending on the value of n, we'll get different results. Think about it. 
If n is 1, this is going to be e to the z equals i times 5 pi over 2. 5 pi over 2 is positive. Therefore, this is going to appear on the positive imaginary. And if n is negative 1, then you're going to have e to the z equals pi over 2 minus 2 pi, which is negative 3 pi over 2. So you're going to have, you're going to be on the opposite side. So the arguments will be different. So we kind of need to do this. Either look at it case by case or kind of simplify the problem by saying, okay, I want n to be positive. I don't really care about the other case. But you can definitely look at it um, differently, separately. So case by case is probably the best approach. I'm probably going to stick with the positive approach. And I'm even going to say at some point like, okay, suppose n is equal to zero because what happens if n is equal to zero? Let's start with that. If n is equal to zero, then we're going to get e to the z equals i times pi over 2. And that should be the principal value, right? Because we're kind of going with the smallest value between negative pi and pi. By the way, that's a half open interval because you can't include both negative pi and pi, right? And one of them is included. I can't remember which one. I think pi is not and negative pi is included. Correct me if I'm wrong. So this kind of simplifies the problem, but also makes it a little easier to solve. Now, what am I going to do? Same idea. Since I have a positive multiple of i, I can write this as the modulus times e to the power i times the argument. What is the argument for positive multiples of i? Like i, 2, i, 3, i, 5, i, pi, i, whatever, pi over 2. So we're going to use pi over 2 again. And if you wanted to simplify this more, you could just stick to the principle. Let's do it both times. And now this is what we have. Natural log both sides, you're going to get z equals ln pi over 2 plus i times pi over 2. Nice, right? Doesn't it look cool? Yes, this is the simplest you can get. <laughs> of course, assuming that we're always going to stick with the principal values. What happens if you never stick with the principal or at least one level's principal and then not principal? You could probably write it as follows then, e to the z equals, and we're also going to check the result from Wolfram Alpha. I already used n before. Let's use 2 pi k. And then when you do this, you're going to have an additional 2 pi k i. So you can kind of add it here like this. And if k is 0, you get the yellow solution. Otherwise, you're going to get the full solution. And if you want to go back even more and use this, that's fine too. You're just going to have more pi's or more integers in the equation. Now let's go ahead and check Wolfram Alpha because I'm curious, you're probably curious too. Let's see if Wolfram Alpha can capture the actual solution. Ready, set, and go. Ta-da! Yes, the solution is like this. And guess what? This is equal to pi, right? As you can see, and this is equal to 2 pi. And there's some i's on the outside, which will be, mul which will be multiplied when you distribute, and so on and so forth. Make sense? I hope it does. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.